Who did Jesus reconcile Christians to? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 through 18. You want to turn there in your King James Bible and follow along. We begin here, it says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. In other words, Gentiles are uncircumcised. Jews are circumcised. They're the ones that call Gentiles uncircumcised. Um, verse 12, That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes are far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make, of, to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby." <clears throat> verse 17, And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. We're reconciled to God the Father. Right there. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Alright. Next go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17 through 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I have the banner here. But uh, continuing verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Again, we're reconciled to the Father through Jesus Christ. To wit that God was in Christ, recon reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's what I do. I'm a preacher. I am an ambassador of Jesus Christ, called of the Lord to come out and preach the gospel to the lost world. And I've been doing that for over 10 years now. Verse 20, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay, so you see it again there. We are reconciled to the Father, God the Father, through Jesus Christ. No problem. Unless you believe in the Trinity. The Trinity teaching, you can go to Colossians chapter 1. The Trinity teaching is a pagan teaching which is far into the pages of Scripture. Jesus Christ is God, fully and completely God. He is the body. The Father is the soul. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. These three are one. One being, not three separate persons. That is a teaching that is far into Scripture. It is a doctrine of devils that was invented by the Catholic Church. Tertullian, specifically, was the one that came up with the term Trinity. And I think it was the 2nd or 3rd century. So, I mean, it's a heresy that came out later. But let me show you the whole thing here. Because, see, they try to separate Jesus and the Father. They say, well, they're not the same being. Oh, yes, they are. Let me prove it to you. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. We'll start there. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us, made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. He is the body. Okay, The invisible God is the soul. And the Spirit is the Holy Ghost. It's really easy to understand if you're, if you're saved. Verse 16, For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. This is talking about Jesus here. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. 
Uh, what's the context? Verse 19, it pleased the Father that in Him, Jesus, should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of His cross, Jesus, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself. Well, no, what we just read over there in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 through 18, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21, that were reconciled to the Father. But here in this passage, Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, it says, we're reconciled to Jesus Christ. Why is it saying that we're reconciled, you know, we're both reconciled to Jesus and to the Father? Because they're one and the same. Yes, they can split up. A body and soul and spirit can split up and go do different things. When you die, your body stays on the earth and your soul and your spirit go to be with the Lord. We're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now if you're saved. Yes, body, soul, and spirit can separate. I don't teach some thing of modalism or whatever that there's Jesus is, is God and He just shifts you know, from being the Son to the Father and the whatever, whatever. Uh, no, I don't teach that. There's a separation there. Body, soul, spirit. They can separate, but they're just one being. There's just one God. The Trinity teaches that there are three gods. And then they lie and they say, oh, we don't teach that. Three separate persons, but they're all just one God. How does that work? It doesn't work. Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. And here's the whole point of it. And I've been going over this over and over and over again in my studies against the Trinity. Um... Here's the whole point. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. That's such a uh, telling thing there. You have to use philosophy to prove the Trinity. I, again, I showed it in other videos where the Catechism comes right out and says about the, the Trinity that, yes, we had to borrow from philosophy to explain how the Trinity works. That's not the biblical Godhead. All right? The biblical Godhead is different than the Trinity. Very much different. And if you are a hardcore Trinitarian, then you're a Catholic because that's the central core teaching of Roman Catholicism. The Trinitarian dogma. Again, watch my other videos. I've proved it. You have to use philosophy. And what happens? You get spoiled. It's a tradition of men. Verse 9, for in him, who's the him? Christ. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's no argument. There's no way around this thing. All these people that get all upset and everything else, and Denlinger's a heretic because he attacks the Holy Trinity. Uh, I'm not a heretic, according to the scriptures. According to Catholic tradition, oh, I'm an I'm a arch heretic. I'm, I'd like to be number one on their list. Okay, I have no love for Roman Catholicism. I love Catholic people. I want to see them get saved and get out of that satanic system that they're in. But when you get some kind of a satanic, wicked system that molests children and they just take the, the priest or the cardinal or whatever else, it's happening all the time. It's called satanic ritual abuse. It's part of mind control. And they take these child molesting priests and bishops and they just shift them around and whatever else. And then that church comes out and says that the Trinity teaching is the number one core dogma of their faith. Yes, I'm going to reject it. I'm going to reject, reject it for the rest of my life. And if I get labeled as, an, as a heretic, sign me up, please. Put me at the top of the list because I will keep continuing to attack this Trinity nonsense. And again, you go back into the pagan cultures of the past, into ancient Egypt, Isis, um, Horus set. You have in Babylon, you have Semiramis, uh, Nimrod, and Tammuz. You have all these different pagan cultures, and they had three gods that claimed to be one. They're all just one. They're one in, in divine essence and things. It's satanic. And to take that vile pagan tradition and put it on the Godhead of the Bible and say that Jesus is... is God the Son, and then you have the Holy Ghost is God the Spirit, and then the Father is God the Father and things. God the Father is a biblical term. God the Son, God the Spirit are not. Please understand that. And again, if you watch some of my older videos, you'll hear me saying those things because I was just ignorantly repeating the, from things I studied. I read a lot of books. I've heard a lot of preaching and, and 
you know, and I repeated those things. But the Lord convicted me and said, hey, your, your speech needs to line up with the book, especially on something as important as the Godhead. Very, very important. So yet another proof there that the Father and the Son, the same things are said about them. We're to be reconciled to the Father through Jesus Christ. But we're also, the Lord set up, the Father has set up Jesus Christ that we're to be reconciled to Him. Hmm. Jesus shed His blood on the cross. And yet Acts chapter 20, verse 28 says that God, the Father in context there, that He purchased us with, he purchased the church with His own blood. How can a soul shed blood? Unless it was separate blood than Jesus' blood. You get in all kinds of satanic heresy when you go for this Trinity nonsense. You change the truth of God into a lie. So we'll keep coming out and we'll keep exposing it. Going to be doing another video next here, proving 100% conclusively that Jesus is the body, God the Father is the soul, and the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. Going to prove it in the next video. Thank you for watching.